truly grateful, honored, and happy to be with all of you today. My special gratitude, Shankar Chargachi, Sri Chidananda Saraswati Ji, Bhagavati Devi, and to everyone. I was asked to speak on the yoga of love. The Bhagavad Gita Krishna tells, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatmana Sochati Nakangshati Samasaraveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhaktim Labate Param that one who attains the state of Brahman or realizes one's true eternal spiritual identity is prasanatma, is always happy. Because the nature of the soul, the nature of the living force within the body of every living being is such an ananda, eternal, full of knowledge, and full of joy. In that joyful state, nasochati nakangshati, we do not lament for what is lost, nor do we desire what we do not have. Atmarama, it means we're self-satisfied. Najayate mriyate vakadachit. The soul is unborn. Nahanyate hanyamane siride. It never dies. There's a beautiful poem by a great saint named Govinda Das from about 450 years ago. Bajahure mana srinanda nandana abhoya charanara vindare. My dear mind, please worship the divine son of Nanda, Sri Krishna. Because when you feel the love of the Supreme, and when that love awakens our eternal love, then we become fearless. In this world, people are so much motivated by fear. Fear of loss, loss of a loved one, loss of our reputation, loss of money, loss of security, loss of health, and ultimately death, the inevitable. But when we realize, when we have the experience of our true self, that person that's seeing through the eyes, hearing through the ears, tasting through the tongue, loving through the heart, and thinking through the brain. Ananda Mayobhyashat. We become full of joy, full of pleasure. And therefore, we do not hanker or lament for the things that are ever changing within this world. Samasaraveshu Bhuteshu. Uh, so happy to see you after a long time. <laughs> the nature, the testimony of a person who is spiritually enlightened is that we see all living beings with equal vision. When we understand the true nature of ourself, we simultaneously are illuminated with the vision of the true nature of all living beings and everything. Bhoktaram Jagatapasam sarva loka meheshwaram suradam sarva bhutanam gyatva mam shanti mirchchati. We attain true shanti, true peace, when we have this vision of seeing the divine, seeing God, 
Krishna's presence in everything. In the path of bhakti, everything is essentially spiritual. Om Purnam Adha Purnam Idam. The absolute truth is perfect and complete and everything emanating from the absolute truth is perfect and complete. Krishna tells in 10th chapter of Gita, Aham sarvasya prabhavo matta sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante mam buddha bhava samanvita. I'm the source of all spiritual and all material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who know this perfectly engage in my loving service, seva, and worship me with all their hearts. <clears throat> what is the difference between material and spiritual? It's our consciousness. When we do not recognize the innate divine connection to the supreme in this world, we see it as material. There is ahankar, the false ego. I'm thinking I'm this body, I'm thinking I'm this mind, I'm thinking that whatever is in my connection is mine or something else is yours. But the Gita tells Sarva Loka Maheshwara, everything is the property of the Supreme. When we understand this, then we use everything in harmony with the Supreme. This is the principle of yoga, harmony. To harmonize the body and the mind and the intelligence with the jivatma, with the soul. And what does it mean practically to harmonize the body, the mind, and the soul? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he gave a simple teaching. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sajjika Bunoi Sravanadi Sudhichiti Kodiya Yudoi. That love for Krishna, love for God who has many names, the source of everything, Aham Bija Pratapita, the mother, the father of all living beings, is dormant within all of us. It's simply forgotten. This maya is like a cloud that obscures the light. But daivi he shuguna mayi mama maya duratya ya mame kam ye prapadyante maya meta durantite. When we take shelter of the supreme source of everything, then that cloud is dispelled. And then we see everything within this world is sacred. This microphone, when it's used to enlighten people's consciousness, when it's used as an instrument of, of God's compassion, this microphone is sacred. It's not material. And similarly, everything within creation, when we live in harmony with God's will, then we could recognize the divinity within everything. The environmental problem is simply a manifestation of the ecological pollution within our minds. When our mind is clean, clean of greed, envy, anger, selfish lust, arrogance and illusion, then everything we do, then respecting Mother Earth, honoring Mother Earth, we will replenish Mother Earth, Mother Ganga, in everything we do. Vidyavanaya sampane brahmane gavihastini suni jaiva sopake ja pandita samadarshana. And we see all living beings in their divine nature. Male, female, black, white, red, yellow, brown color people. 
from the east to the west, Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, Jain, Parsi, Sikh, agnostic, atheist, True dharma is to see that even if one is an elephant or a cow or a dog or a cat or any type of human, mamayavam so jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana, we're all part of God. And then there's a natural respect, there's a natural compassion. Jeev jago, jeev jago, goda chandra bole, kota nidra jayo maya pisachira kole. When we wake up to our true identity, then we realize sanatan dharma, to love, and to express our love through compassion. Compassion in the way we think, the way we speak and all of our actions to be a well-wisher. Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Nasochati Nakankshati Samasaraveshu Bhuteshu Madhbhaktim Labhate Param When one is in this state of consciousness, on that Brahma Bhuta transcendental state of consciousness, then we understand what is true bhakti or devotion. To live, to live in a spirit of harmony and seva. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a story of a king. His name was Ranti. And he was fasting in a forest for about 40 days with his family. He was in a secluded place. When his fast was complete, people brought a wonderful feast of sacred food, prasad, for him and his family to eat. Just when he was about to eat, when he couldn't go without food any longer, a Brahman, Brahmana, a, saint, a saintly person came to his little hut and said, I'm very hungry, please give me food. So he fed him completely. Then he sat down with his family to eat and just a person from the jungle came in. In fact, he came in with a pack of wild dogs. And he said, I am very hungry and so are my dogs. Please feed us. So Ranti Day fed his whole family and he fed this man from the jungle and all the dogs. And all that was left was a little water. It was just enough to keep him alive till more food could come, which was a long way. And when he was just about to drink that water, trembling, another man came. This person was considered by society to be just useless person. No culture, nothing. Just living in the jungles. That was the way society saw him. But he came and said to Ranti, I'm thirsty, do you have water? And Ranti saw him as a child of God. He offered him all respect, all affection. And then he recited a prayer. And in my personal life, this prayer that he chanted is, it's like a landmark that I believe all spiritual people should be striving to reach.
It encapsulates the spirit of dharma, of bhakti. He prayed to God, to Bhagavan. He said, my dear beloved Lord, I do not pray to you for elevation to the heavens. I do not pray to you for the eight mystic yogic cities or perfections. I do not pray to you even for liberation, mukti. My only prayer is wherever you want me to be and whatever birth you want me to take, let me be willing to give up my life to show compassion for others. And then he said, by giving this very poor person this water, I will never be hungry, never be thirsty, never lament, morose, ever again. And then he gave him the water. At that moment, all those personalities who came begging, they manifested the forms of Brahma, Shiva, Surya, great devatas. They wanted to show what kind of a person Ranti Dave truly was. And they also gave him food. <laughs> and after this situation, Shukadev Goswami tells his entire kingdom was enlightened. Everyone was God conscious. What a leader does, the common people, that becomes the standard of what's truly valuable. The greatest need in the world is leaders. And everyone, in whatever situation, whether it affects a few people or large quantities of people, we all have the opportunity to be leaders, to live with integrity, to live with compassion. But it's only truly possible in a sustainable way when there's a deep foundation within our hearts of inner peace, inner satisfaction, inner love and compassion. And that is the purpose of yoga. That is the purpose of religion. That is the purpose of life, to awaken our true potential. Each one of us is a divine being. Each one of us, in whatever capacity, has an opportunity to do, do something wonderful in our life. In Sri Ram's Leela, they were building a bridge across the Indian Ocean to rescue Sita. Hanuman was carrying mountains. And it is said, while he was carrying a mountain with Ram, Ram and Lakshman on his shoulders, there was a little spider. And we, spiders' arms and legs are very thin. He was, according to his capacity, trying to help build the bridge by kicking little grains of sand. Hanuman was taking mountains and placing it in the, in the ocean. <laughs> and the little spider was just kicking one grain of sand at a time, struggling. And Ram told Hanuman, and through Hanuman he has told all of us forever. 
that spider is doing every bit as much as you are. Because the supreme being does not just see what we do, but sees the purpose, the intent behind it. This little spider is trying her best, and you're trying your best. You are both equal to me. Samoham sarva bhuteshu namedve shostina priya yeba janti tamam bhaktya mai te te shu chapyaham. In Bhagavad, <coughs> in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells, I'm equal to everyone. The Supreme Being loves everyone unconditionally forever. May not like what we do, but loves us for who we are. But Yegatamam Prapatyante reciprocates according to our love, to our surrender. Krishna reveals himself, the supreme beauty, the supreme lover, the supreme reciprocator of affection. And Sri Radha, who's the very embodiment of the ultimate compassion. We could feel their love. We could be instruments of their love in every aspect of our life. Or, according to how we choose to live, according to our purpose and what we do, we could simply be imprisoned by our selfish desires. The idea of bhakti is very simple. Take our egoistic, selfish identifications out of the center of our life and put Bhagavan in the center of our life. And then in whatever we do, we're coming closer and closer to perfection. The Bhagavad Purana tells, with every rising and setting of the sun, we are one day closer to death. But for those who utilize their time to hear and chant, remember the glories of the Lord and live in the harmony of the Lord through seva, with every rising and setting of the sun, we are one day closer to eternal life. This beautiful international yoga conference on the holy banks of Mother Ganga beside the jungles of the holy Himalaya mountains in the presence of rishis, saints, sadhus and so many pilgrims, seekers is a beautiful opportunity to unite on this simple principle. How to bring the best out in each other. How to see the inherent goodness in each other. I'll end with a simple experience I had that transformed me so much. My beloved Guru Srila Prabhupada when he first went to the West, he was 70 years old. He went on a cargo ship for 38 days. He arrived in New York. He had seven dollars that couldn't be, in rupees, that couldn't be changed. He didn't know anyone. He said he was loitering like a vagabond. But he saw in people's hearts that spiritual spark. He saw Krishna. He saw God was inherently within everyone. 
And because he saw it, he fanned that spark. Wherever we go back from this yoga conference, let us fan our own sparks through our sadhana, our satsang, our sadachar, and our seva. Through the people we associate with, through our spiritual practice, through the character in which we live and the mood of our service. And then we could be instruments of a power infinitely higher than our own to fan the spark of love within others' hearts. This kirtan or the chanting of the holy names is a simple, wonderful, enjoyable way of fanning that spark. Tasmat sankirtanam bishnur jagan mangalamang hasam mahatam apikodavya vidyai kantakaraniskritam. Yamaraj spoke these words in the Srimad Bhagavatam. That in the entire universe, the most auspicious activity is when we come together to sing the divine names and glories of the Supreme. Thank you very much. RG Media YouTube channel. Like, share, subscribe.